Other specified diabetes that we see with E13, there's a note under this code category that states whether the diabetes is due to genetic defects of the beta cells in the pancreas, data, genetic defects in insulin action post pancreatectomy or post-procedural diabetes or second diabetes not elsewhere classified. There are other forms of diabetes that are coded elsewhere. And again, as we've seen in other things, special carve outs are two. Gestational diabetes would be coded to the OB chapter starting with an O and neonatal diabetes would be coded to that chapter. And those codes begin with a P. Again, coders may assign as many codes from categories E08 as E13 to identify all the associated conditions as we talked about. And we always want to use those Z79.4 codes to indicate the use of insulin except with type 1. And there are guidelines on that you can see in your book. And again, secondary diabetes and the use of oral, oral hypoglycemic or injectable drugs. If somebody has secondary diabetes and they use insulin, oral drugs or injectable non-insulin drugs, we always wanna pick up a code from that Z79, right? and we want to identify it as long-term current use of insulin. If a patient's treated with both oral drugs and insulin, we're just going to code the insulin and the 7984 for the oral drugs. We'll pick up both of those. If they're treated both with insulin and injectable non-insulin, we would code the long-term insulin, in other words, the Z79.4, and then the Z79.899, other long-term current drug therapy. If a patient's treated with both oral drugs and injectable non-insulin drugs, we would assign Z79.84, long-term current use of oral hypoglycemic drugs and Z79.89, other long-term current drug therapy. However, and this is where it gets a little confusing, code Z79.4 should not be given temporarily to bring a type two secondary diabetic patient's blood sugar under control during encounter. So if somebody's having a diabetic episode and they haven't been on insulin prior, we would not assign this code. And again, we can have other things that are somewhat related, these types of hypoglycemic comas, E15, non-diabetic hypoglycemic coma, we can have drug-induced hypoglycemia without a coma, hypoglycemia, other unspecified. And the hypoglycemia you can think of as a side effect of the diabetes, but it can also happen to patients that are not diabetic. And again, we need to review the lab test to see what is going on. Again, it's a, somebody's a diabetic when it's documented that they're a diabetic not just because they're hypoglycemic. And again, with this one, the Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, again, main term, we could start with syndrome and then go for the subterms and find that. And basically what this is, is a gastronoma that develops in the pancreas and duodenum and it releases gastrin hormone that causes the stomach to produce excessive acid. That's really all that it is. But for the coding purposes, start with the word syndrome. We can have other disorders of the different endocrine glands, 
And again, with all of these, you want to make sure that you're reading the use of the additional codes to identify what it's due to and for any adverse effects. Cushing syndrome, again, main term syndrome, results from excessive production or exposure to cortisol. Cortisol, of course, is produced in one of the endocrine glands, the adrenal glands, and causes typically by a pituitary tumor. And then these people need to take drugs to counteract the excess cortisol. Addison's disease is somewhat of the opposite. It's basically the adrenal gland is not producing enough cortisol and androgens. And the cause is to usually autoimmune where the body's immune system is attacking the adrenal glands. And again, patients with this go on glutocorticoid, cortoids, cortison, and others and have to follow a strict diet. And again, anytime we see a disease that is named for somebody like Addison's, we can use that as a main term. Polycystic ovarian disease, main term disease syndrome. And then we would go down in alphabetical order. Pretty straightforward. And again, different sub carve outs on that. So you have to read the documentation separately. And now we have another one that there's a lot of new interest in, particularly with Medicare patients in terms of malnutrition. A lot of different types of malnutrition, malnutrition being the main term. We can also have protein calorie malnutrition, quashicors, all these other different types of things. And again, the when we just see main term, we want to take a look at and find out exactly what's going on. And again, all these codes fall into the code categories of E40 through E46. The different vitamin deficiencies, again, main term deficiency vitamin, and you can look through on those, take a look at, at a few of them. And now one that's another one that there's a lot of interest in, particularly with Medicare patients, is being overweight, obese, and other, as they globally call it, hyperalimentation. And again, what this is, is basically the patient's weight is greater than what's considered healthy. A lot of reasons for this, overeating, not being physically active, what have you. So things to look at in terms of body mass index. And there's a coding guideline under 1.b.14 that talks about documentation on this. And the BMI can be coded based on the clinician's documentation other than a physician. So this is a little bit of the exception. So in other words, if a nurse or another practitioner documents what the BMI is, we can use that documentation to code the BMI. A person that's described as being obese or morbidly obese, as you sometimes see in the records, has too much body fat. And again, we have some different ranges that you might want to put notes on here for the purposes of this chapter. If it's less than 18.5, they're underweight, 18.5 to 24.9, normal, 25 to 29.9 is overweight. And 30 and higher on BMI means obese. There are other metabolic disorders, volume depletion, dehydration, hypovolemia. And again, these codes fall into the E86 and E86-1. Getting into something that's a little bit different, we have cystic fibrosis, which is an inherited disease causes excessive buildup in mucus and other types of complications, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pancreatic insufficiency, 
high sweat electrolytes and ultimately respiratory failure. So these fall into the code categories V70 through E88. And that's all I have for you. Please contact me during office hours if you have any further questions about this. We'll see you online.